I've always wondered, is it really possible to eat chicken rice every day? Our colleague Danny claims he can eat chicken rice every single day. And I decided, okay, let's just try it out. So, what if you can only eat chicken rice for two whole weeks? There's this guy on Instagram, Kui.feng, who is rumoured to eat chicken rice every day. Is this even possible? Hello, I'm Diane. I'm a video producer. Oh, you can't ask someone that! I'm trying to hide my weight. On this scale, I am like 54. Like, I want to prove to myself I can do this, you know, it's just chicken rice, it's just like food. You just eat and then you poop, that's all, right? At this point, I have no idea what I've gotten myself into. But basically, this is the rule. For lunch and dinner, I can only eat chicken rice. Around there. Oh, sorry, it's eight. Yeah, four, six. Time for lunch. So, it's day one. Uh, and I'm really nervous. I actually have never been so nervous about eating chicken rice in my life. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it up and have steam one day, roasted, steam, roasted. So like, I won't get sick, hopefully. And I'm hoping at the end of this experience, I will be some kind of like, chicken rice guru. Or chicken rice queen. Or even like, go into chicken rice nirvana. Yay, chicken! Chicken! Okay, yeah, it's very good.我們吃到現在吃到的雞飯是新加坡雞飯 so you want me to eat breast meat to get breast? What is this, Diane? Okay, so it's... I just want to say that the time is never to get my hair went long day and I have this like Thai style tofu. <laughs> and this... This is a lie. I'm still eating chicken rice. I'm still having a lot of my meal. Like this boring ass chicken rice. I'm going to tell the audience that this is a lie because this afternoon she also ordered a side, the same thing. So, okay, my stupid colleagues are making me be honest. Then I added veggie. I can't just eat the cover, okay? I ate mala for lunch. Uh, um, my producer is here to scold me. Reveal yourself. It's her fault. It's like, not this, girl, this girl here, she was the one that was like, Huh, you need to eat chicken rice? You want to eat mala? You are okay. Like, 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 if there's mala and there's chicken rice, and you really eat man, you really eat chicken rice for last two days. Shame, 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 shame. It's not going great. I feel terrible. I'm so sick of the taste of chicken rice. It's like garlic taste and the oil is like, ugh, just constantly in my mouth. So I figured like, okay, honestly, I think I am paying it is the rice of chicken rice. I'm gonna buy that. Makasi! <laughs> okay, okay, sorry, my bad. The editor told me that I'm wrong. And ayam penyet actually originates from Java, Indonesia and has no links to Hainanese chicken rice. How chicken rice grew so popular is partly because it is easily made halal. According to Liana, a food writer, Red Chinese food first sold Hainanese chicken rice in the 1960s and 70s. It was a hit and other places started selling it. 
They just needed that minor tweak and get halal salted chickens. And halal! Oh, you want to eat garlic chili or mala chili? Mala chili. I don't know, it's just this perpetual garlic thing. Speaking of chili, do you know what the original chicken rice chili is like? Apparently, the original Hainanese chicken rice is not this red chili dip, but it's a yellowish sauce with a lot of ginger that is chopped and not blended. There are also people who say that the red chili sauce is a result of borrowing from the local Malay Chinese chili culture. Let's talk about the Bristol stool scale. The scale is from 1 to 7. 1 is like hard lumps, so you're constipated. Type 3 to 4 is the normal poop, like normal full chunk. And type 6 to 7 is like diarrhea, lao sai. My next few days for me was like number 1s and 2s. I died. So when we asked our grandparents about chicken rice, uh, I was very surprised to learn that it was actually a luxury item. Have you ever wondered what happened in between? How did chicken rice go from being this like premium thing to something that you can find in almost every hawker centre and coffee shop? I think it boils down to three things. The first would be nostalgia. Our parents' generation, our grandparents' generation, they all connect to chicken rice in a certain way. They all have memories of it because it's been around for so long. Can you give us a little bit So the second point would be rice. Rice is this common denominator across uh, a lot of Asian cuisines like Indian food, Malay food, Chinese food, Eurasian food. All of them use rice as like their staple. So I think the fact that the rice in chicken rice is just as important as the chicken makes this dish something that connects us across different cultures. The third point would be how easily replicable chicken rice is. It's not something that requires like special ingredients or you know, it's not a super difficult recipe. It's something that anyone can make. Makes it a dish that uh, is so easy to find. Chicken rice is very miserable. Fine vegetables and the chicken looks terrible, but the rice smells very good. Finally, day 14. The last chicken rice. By the way, I'm dying. Thanks for asking. I just feel so sleepy all the time. So while I was cooking, I wondered why is Hainan chicken rice, a very Chinese dish, our national dish? So an undergrad study actually said, the collective sentiments shared by Singaporeans through experiences with chicken rice could serve as a stabilizing force and establish a Singaporean identity that binds all ethnicities together. The author also said that by touting chicken rice as our national dish to tourists and you know, repeating it all the time, that's how it has become commodified. And that's why you have so many chicken rice products around. There's something wrong with the weighing machine. Don't blame the machine. No! <laughs> Yeah, I'm not weird. 